At the zenith of its glory, the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo epitomized the pinnacle of opulence and grandeur in the East. An architectural masterpiece, it stood as a beacon of luxury, marrying Eastern elegance with Western grandiosity. Remarkably, it withstood the devastating Great Kanto earthquake on the very day it opened, showcasing its extraordinary design and engineering. Over the years, the hotel not only witnessed, but also played a pivotal role in hosting world luminaries during not one, but two Olympic Games. This grand establishment, a harmonious blend of Eastern and Western design philosophies, attracted an international clientele, becoming a hallmark of architectural brilliance and cultural significance, only to face an unexpected demise. In today's episode of Old Money Mansions, we'll detail how, in a turn of events that shook the world, the iconic Imperial Hotel of Tokyo, once a pinnacle of grandeur at the height of global sophistication, faced an abrupt closure, dismantling and ultimate demolition, as we describe. Why Tokyo demolished its most opulent hotel, in the realm of American architecture, where rugged form waltzes in perfect harmony with unbridled nature, there exists one name that commonly reigns supreme, Frank Lloyd Wright. His innovative philosophical approach to design was grounded in the idea of creating buildings that exist in effortless unity with their environment, showcasing his strong commitment to organic architecture. Indeed, Frank Lloyd Wright was not only an architect, but a trailblazer in design, profoundly influencing 20th century architecture. His work was characterized by a unique style that emphasized horizontal lines, flat or hipped roofs with broad overhangs, windows grouped in horizontal bands, integration with the landscape, solid construction, craftsmanship. Before his work on the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo, some of his most significant projects included the famed Roby House, still standing in Chicago, a defining example of the Prairie School style Characterized by its extended horizontal lines and integration with the landscape, the Larkin Administration Building, which demonstrated his innovative use of space and light, and Unity Temple, which showcased his use of concrete and represented a new approach to religious architecture. These buildings, among others, quickly cemented Wright's status as a pivotal figure in American architecture, illustrating his ability to blend form and function with the natural environment. Furthermore, in the tender budding of his early 20s, Frank Lloyd Wright embarked on an artistic odyssey that would eternally mold his creative path. Drawn like a moth to a flame, he found himself spellbound by the mesmerizing allure of Japanese art and architecture. In the span of a mere decade, he transformed into an internationally renowned collector of Japanese woodblock prints, harboring a particular fondness for the works of Katsushika Hokusai. Hokusai's genius lay in his ability to unveil the intricacies of living forms through the elegant interplay of simple geometric shapes, an epiphany that resonated deeply with Wright and planted the seeds of his organic architectural designs. With this in mind, 1905 now stands as a pivotal year in architectural history, marking Frank Lloyd Wright's maiden voyage to the land of the rising sun. Here, amidst the serene splendor of Japan's temples, shrines, gardens, and residences, Wright bore witness to the living embodiment of his youthful artistic visions. Armed with his trusty camera, he painstakingly documented these ethereal structures and landscapes, crafting a photographic testament that endures as the sole surviving record of his sojourn, a treasure trove of inspiration for generations to come. And Japan's beckoning to Wright was no mere coincidence, it was a deliberate yearning to birth an architectural masterpiece that would herald Japan's modernization and global eminence. The Imperial Hotel, Wright's magnum opus, would soon be erected as a living symbol of his vision, a breathtaking fusion of traditional Japanese aesthetics and modern Western design. Now, in 1911, the journey to build the new Imperial Hotel took a pivotal turn when Frank Lloyd Wright's name emerged as a top candidate for its design. This opportunity arose through the advocacy of Frederick Gukin, a connoisseur of Japanese prints and an associate of Wright. Gukin recommended Wright to Isaku Hayashi, the hotel's manager, recognizing his potential for this grand project. And of course, Wright's profound affinity for Japanese art and culture was instrumental in winning him this prestigious commission. In fact, even before working on the hotel, Wright's deep reverence for Japanese aesthetics was so intense that he once hailed Japan as 
the most romantic, artistic, nature-inspired country on Earth. Now, by 1916, the Japanese government officially entrusted Wright with the task of designing the new Imperial Hotel. This project was envisioned as a symbol of Japan's emergence into modernity, bridging its rich heritage with Western influences, and Wright was charged with the ambitious goal of blending both Japanese and Western architectural elements in a seamless and awe-inspiring manner. This, on the 19th of November, 1919, a significant ceremony marked the commencement of construction, embarking on a path that would challenge and ultimately transform traditional architectural practices. Specifically, Wright's audacious decision to employ a floating foundation, a groundbreaking concept of its time, proved to be an inspired stroke of genius. This ingenious choice endowed the Imperial Hotel with an impervious shield against the capricious tremors of earthquakes, which was soon put to the test right after its opening, rendering it a bastion of serenity amidst seismic turbulence. Yet, as with any grand undertaking, the path to realization was fraught with challenges. The period spanning from 1921 to 1922 bore witness to an unrelenting quest for sourcing materials and a meticulous adaptation to local construction techniques. The unwavering determination and resolve of the construction team were palpable as they triumphed over each obstacle. Wright's innovative construction methods, coupled with the use of the exquisite Oya stone, a material of unmatched grace and presence, played a pivotal role in shaping the hotel's distinctive character. By January 1923, the Imperial Hotel stood resplendent, its architectural narrative woven from the very fabric of innovation and ingenuity. The Oya stone breathed life into the hotel's signature aesthetic, casting an enchanting spell upon all who gazed upon it. This exceptional marriage of materials and vision was nothing short of a resounding triumph, a visual symphony that resonated across the ages. And on the 1st of September, 1923, the Imperial Hotel ceremoniously opened its doors to a world eager to partake in its grandeur. Indeed, it was a day of celebration, yet fate had a different course in mind. On that very day, yes, the exact same day that the hotel opened, the Great Kanto Earthquake convulsed Tokyo to its core. Amidst the chaos and devastation, the Imperial Hotel stood sentinel, piercing the sky. A testament to Wright's pioneering design choices and engineering prowess. A telegram from Baron Kihachiro Okura reported the following. Hotel stands undamaged as a monument of your genius, hundreds of homeless provided by perfectly maintained service. Congratulations. Wright passed the telegram to journalists, helping to perpetuate a legend that the hotel was unaffected by the earthquake. In reality, the building had been damaged. The central section slumped, several floors bulged, four pieces of stonework fell to the ground, fans fell from the balcony, and electric ranges in the kitchen were toppled, starting a kitchen fire that was fairly quickly extinguished. But it was also not the only building to survive or the least damaged. On the insurance company damage scale, one to five, it was in the second best light damage category. In a city ravaged by the wrath of nature, it remained as a beacon of hope, a sanctuary of strength. Better yet, the heyday of the Imperial Hotel was just beginning as the Roaring Twenties were about to hit the world. Now in the opulent decades of the 1920s and 30s, the Imperial Hotel was indeed a symbol of elegance and luxury. This architectural gem, adorned with bespoke furnishings and sumptuous interiors, quickly became a magnet for illustrious guests and the setting for magnificent events. Its distinctive style was soon interpreted as a unique interpolation on the 1930s Art Deco movement, and the hotel boasted 60 rooms, each with a fireplace, alongside a formal dining room, a grand ballroom, and an elegant music salon. And the Imperial Hotel became a crossroads for international luminaries during these decades. Esteemed guests included Albert Einstein in 1922, Charles Chaplin in 1932, Babe Ruth and Fyodor Ivanovich Chaliapin in 1934, and Helen Keller in 1937. But beyond its architectural splendor and iconic guests, the hotel also held a significant place in Japanese culture. After the aforementioned Great Kanto earthquake in 1923, the Imperial Hotel emerged as a unique site for Shinto weddings. This popularity led to the incorporation of its own shrine, a novel concept for a hotel at that time. Yet, despite the hotel's splendor and cultural impact, 
the changing global political landscape soon had an effect. By 1936, as Japan geared up for the 1940 Tokyo Summer Olympics, there were discussions about replacing Wright's Imperial Hotel to better meet contemporary needs. With just 280 rooms, the hotel struggled financially, but the outbreak of World War II, paired with the subsequent cancellation of the Olympics, inadvertently spared the hotel from demolition. But during the war, on the 25th of May, 1945, the hotel's south wing suffered extensive damage from incendiary bombs, destroying the famed Peacock Room. The hotel invited Wright to redesign the damaged areas, but he understandably declined given the geopolitical state of the world at the time. Next, Japan's surrender on the 15th of August 1945 marked a poignant chapter in the hotel's story. Post-war, guests noted that the Wright-designed Imperial, though historic, lacked the brightness and modern comforts they were accustomed to. Now, in the 1950s, Tokyo's Imperial Hotel, by then a survivor of both the 1923 Great Kanto earthquake and World War II, embarked on a new chapter of growth and transformation. This period saw the hotel evolving to meet the demands of a changing world, while retaining its status as a beacon of luxury and cultural exchange. The decade commenced with the construction of an annex behind Frank Lloyd Wright's original structure, signaling an era of expansion and modernization. This development was in response to the hotel's escalating fame and the growing need for more accommodation and updated facilities. Therefore, the Imperial Hotel was more than a refurbished lodging. It had again become a sought-after destination, attracting global celebrities and dignitaries. In the early 50s, it hosted renowned figures like comedian Bob Hope and actor Cary Grant, further cementing its position as a hub of international glamour and hospitality. And continuing its trajectory of innovation, the hotel embarked on another significant expansion in 1957 with the construction of a second annex. This move was reflective of the hotel's continued commitment to adapting to guest preferences and maintaining its esteemed status. For example, one of the most groundbreaking introductions by the hotel in this era was in 1958, the Imperial Viking, a Scandinavian-style buffet inspired by a contemporary movie. This concept, a first in Japanese hotels, allowed guests an all-you-can-eat dining experience and effectively introduced the Viking buffet style in Japan. However, as the revolutionary 1960s rolled in, signs of deterioration became evident. The hotel's structure, built on soft subsoil, began to sink unevenly, thus giving the corridors a distinctive undulating appearance, and rooms once lauded for their design were now seen as outdated, cramped and lacking in modern amenities. Yet despite these structural challenges, the hotel played a pivotal role during the 1964 Tokyo Olympics. Specifically, it accommodated key members of the International Olympic Committee, dedicating 250 beds for the purpose. However, the limited number of rooms sadly highlighted the hotel's financial impracticality in the heart of Tokyo. Therefore, by the late 60s, the Wright-designed Imperial Hotel, once a symbol of architectural ingenuity, was in a state of decline, and its doors eventually closed on the 15th of November, 1967. This decision to demolish the hotel was indeed met with opposition, notably from Wright's widow, Olgi Vanna, who implored for its preservation as a historic and cultural landmark. Despite these appeals, demolition proceeded shortly after the closure. However, the legacy of the Imperial Hotel was partially preserved. The central lobby wing and reflecting pool were carefully dismantled and reconstructed at the Museum Meiji Mura near Nagoya. Furthermore, though the Imperial Hotel was demolished, its architectural essence continues to resonate throughout Tokyo, influencing a new generation of structures that blend modernity with traditional Japanese aesthetics. The hotel's legacy is particularly evident in the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building, designed by Kenzo Tange. This building, with its twin towers and a central void, mirrors Wright's fusion of modernist principles with elements of Japanese design. Tangi's use of intersecting planes and a central atrium indeed pays homage to Wright's innovative use of space and light, reflecting a deep appreciation for Wright's philosophy of organic architecture. And another prominent architect, Kengo Kuma, has also drawn inspiration from Wright's approach, Kuma's design of the Nezu Museum being a prime example. 
Here, Kuma incorporates natural materials and large, expansive windows that blur the boundary between the interior and the lush gardens outside. Much like Wright's integration of the natural environment into the fabric of the Imperial Hotel. Kuma's emphasis on minimalism and the use of light, along with his skillful blending of traditional Japanese techniques with modern forms, echoes Wright's pioneering spirit. Moreover, the influence of the Imperial Hotel extends to numerous other contemporary structures in Tokyo. Buildings such as the Prada Building in Aoyama, designed by Herzog and Demuro, also exhibit traits reminiscent of Wright's style, with its crystalline structure offering a modern interpretation of Wright's unique architectural vocabulary. The Imperial Hotel, therefore, remains a vital part of architectural history in Tokyo, and indeed the world. Its innovative design and the synthesis of Eastern and Western design philosophies continue to inspire architects, serving as a blueprint for blending the traditional with the contemporary. In doing so, it stands as a bridge between different eras and cultures, its spirit persisting in the evolving skyline of Tokyo, guiding and influencing the architectural narrative of the city. And now we'd love to see you in the comments. Were you familiar with this incarnation of the Imperial Hotel? And are you a fan of Frank Lloyd Wright's work? We're building an absolutely amazing community of supporters in these discussions, and we're humbled by your responses. We look forward to hearing from you, and thanks again for joining us on another episode of Old Money Mansions. Cheers, until next time.